there are two things that I get asked a lot when it comes to Golang. First thing is, of course, well, how do I learn Golang? But the second thing is, what projects do I recommend? That's what this video is about. Now, if you do want a how to learn Go video, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know. The project that we're going to be working on is a CRUD API. This is a project that I use all the time when learning just about any new language. CRUD simply stands for Create, Read, update and delete. These are the fundamental operations that underpin pretty much all applications that have to manipulate any sort of data, which is pretty much all applications. Think of this project as kind of like a template project where you can replace certain pieces of the project with other technologies that you feel like learning. Fundamentally, the project is going to be made up of a programming language, an HTTP server, and a database of some sort. Each component can be swapped out for whatever it is that you want to learn because each database is gonna handle CRUD operations a different way. Each language is gonna handle HTTP server a different way. You, you're kind of getting the point of what I'm saying, right? Another thing to keep in mind before you jump in is understanding how I approach projects, which is really from kind of an end-to-end -end perspective. I like to not just think about it from the perspective of writing the app, but also the steps that are required after that to actually deploy to production. So yeah, I wanna write my app, but then usually I'll go the process of how do I package this in a Docker container? How do I actually publish this to some sort of cloud service? If you're interested in an easy one, uh, you can use something like Railway. That's a really good service to just kind of get started in testing quickly, but there's tons of services out there. Use whatever you want. Or you could even run it locally, which I have all of that stuff linked in the description below. All right, so the API that we're going to be writing is a task manager. Really simple to kind of think of it. It's sort of like a to-do app of sorts, but it's just not what I call it. It's just a simple task manager. So we're going to have tasks and we need to be able to create new tasks. We need to be able to update existing tasks. We need to be able to delete them. So for the server component of our app, we're going to be using Go Fiber. I have all the links again in the description. Go Fiber is a very fast web framework in a kind of Node.js Express style. So for for that, we're going to need five endpoints. Now you'll notice maybe a discrepancy there because I said CRUD app, create, read, update, delete, but you'll see why here in a second. For the first endpoint, we're going to define our create endpoint, which is actually going to just create our task. Then we're going to define two read endpoints. This is just a very common thing in applications. The first thing we're going to do is get all of the tasks from the database. The second thing that we need is the ability to get an individual task from the database. And the last two will map directly to our update and delete, which is our ability to update an individual task and then delete an individual task. All of these are mapped to the equivalent HTTP verbs. Our reads will be mapped to HTTP get, our update to put, and our create and delete will be mapped to post. In order to get started, I also have supplied here a simple file structure. We're gonna have a main.go file, which is gonna contain all of our endpoints that we define with Go Fiber. Then we're going to have a DB file, which is gonna handle our database connection initialization code. I have the handlers file, which is gonna actually contain all of our CRUD logic. And then finally, I have the tasks.go, which contains our data model and JSON mappings for our task itself. Now, when you create all these files in Go, when you run it, it's not gonna work when you just say go run main.go. You're gonna have to use go run star.go. The next thing to note is you're going to need a couple environment variables that you'll need to define depending on where you're launching your database, whether that be locally or cloud service, and what port you wanna run your application on. Those will be simply mapped to the port environment variable and the database URL environment variable. And I'll throw up what that database URL connection string looks like so you can kind of understand what it's expecting. And in the description, I've posted links to all of the relevant resources around Postgres and Fiber, etc. I've also posted my completed project. So if you do have any questions, you can use that as reference. My recommendation is that to use it as a reference as you try to complete it yourself. That's how you're really going to learn. But if you get stuck, it's there. This is really just the beginning of this project and you'll learn a lot of things about Go along the way. The next things you could think about doing if you wanna extend this project, you could think about how do I extend this via authentication by implementing some sort of API token. That'll expose you to things like JWT and other security workflows that are really common and important. You could go ahead and build a front end app, which is what I end up doing a lot of times. If I wanna mess around with Vue.js or React, I just will implement a front end that 
interacts with the API that I build. Or you could even do some cool kind of backend data focus stuff and focus on, hey, how do I encrypt the data that's going into my database? And then when I get it out of my database, how do I handle the decryption process? Golang has libraries for all of this type of stuff, which will really expose you to the language in a meaningful way. Let me know if you'd like to see any future videos on these examples in the comments. That would be great. And if you could like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, it really helps out the channel. Appreciate you. See you in the next one.